bring the car. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the September meeting of the Alternative Technology Association. Uh, tonight we have a presentation at very, very short notice from New Tech Building System. Warwick, A.B. and Frank. Warwick was in Melbourne all last week and has uh, rushed a presentation together. Just got off the bus on Yep. Uh, <laughs> and they brought some bloody Texans uh, along the side. Oh yes, yeah, they, they. some Victorians as well. well so <laughs> keep it, keep it, uh, keep it in focus. <laughs> They'll be talking about structural insulated panels. So I'll hand over to Warwick. Please welcome Warwick. use the microphone so I don't think anybody needs me to use a microphone. People in the cheap seats at the back, are you alright back there? Some of the old people over in the room. Uh, this is Amy, she's our sales manager. I'm, I'm Warwick, I'm director of sales and uh, this is Frank Martino who owns and developed the new tech building system. Frank is the owner of a company called Australian Portable Camps which is Australia's biggest mining camp manufacturer. And over the last five years, conservatively, Frank would have spent nearly $60 million developing these building products. So all the mining camps that, I don't know if people have got sons, I had a son that worked in a mining camp up in Barrow Island. They lived in one of Frank's portable mining camps that Frank leases out. So when you get a mining camp, Frank supplies the rainwater tanks, the accommodation, the bathrooms, the desks, the furnitures, the fridges, the air conditioners, the water recycling plant. Uh, did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. uh, the kitchens, the, the laundry mats, the bakeries, everything is made here at Monato. So there is something more than a zoo at Monato. It's Australian Port of Camps. It is a circus. It's a circus. <laughs> and you'll get to see that. And he's the ringleader. So, so Frank has developed this over the last five years and we've really only brought it to market over the last 12 weeks as all the building certification has come through and that will all be finalised over the next fortnight. So this is an amazing product and when we got invited, and Frank will tell you that we invited ourselves in to help sell the product, but we're going to say when Frank invited myself and my business partner Greg Toop, uh, who's quite famous in Adelaide, Toop and Toop, everyone's probably heard of that and he'll tell you he's bigger than sliced bread. When we got involved and Frank said I want you to sell our panels, I went, what the effing hell are you talking about panels? So before I did it I took some of these panels out to see builders and architects and construction companies to get their point of view of what this product was. And I have never had a response like it. I mean, I didn't develop the product, I didn't invest $60 million in the product, but the builders, architects, construction companies like Build Environs, uh, Multiplex, these sorts of guys, all the big housing companies have just loved this product. And when you think about this product, I bought a solid brick home 30 years ago. I know it doesn't look like I'm that old, but I am. I bought a solid brick home with a tile roof, and I thought it was that was it in a bit, you know, solid brick tile roof. I now realise what a piece of shit it actually is as far as energy rating. I apologise to the ladies who are about to be using that word. But my house just leaks energy. Frank's got a product that is lightweight yet cyclone rated, category D, which is the strongest in Australia. It's a special PIR fire rated foam. He's got a structural panel that he'll show you that needs no wooden frames, no trusses. The roof has a six metre unsupported span, which means if you now build a cathedral roof, you have no trusses, you've actually got another room in your roof. There is no downside to this. The R values or insulation values compared to solid brick or brick veneer are far superior. You'll get an 8.5 to 9 star rating using this product. We built a house which you'll see, uh, and that was a project house by five unskilled labourers in 10 days. So when you think about holding costs when you go to a bank to borrow money, the holding costs are enormous when they say we'll build the house by 26 weeks. And even now you're getting all the builders panicking because they promised to get people into their home by Christmas and they're struggling to do it. But we can, we can take an order in October and have the house completed by December. So this is, a, this is a world first product, and that's not me saying it, that is the companies, the big construction and building companies around Adelaide and New York State. So with that, without further ado, I'll hand you to the owner of the crowd, Mr. Frank Martino. Uh, probably. Don't sing, all right? <laughs> um, my English is might not be the best. My name is not Frank Martino, but it's Don Francesco Antonio Martino. Then when I came here, I had a problem. Oh, they had a problem. 
they could not pronounce my name. So they started calling me Frankie. I didn't like Frankie. So I went for Frank. So I'm a chef by trade, but uh, I love construction. I've been building over the years, hotel, hotel, shopping center, houses, and things like that. Then I got involved in uh, construction, mobile accommodation, for mining and oil and gas company. And I started using a panel that I used to buy from our friend Bondo. Everyone they know Bondo. Bondo, they got a very good panel. But it is polystyrene. Polystyrene means that the 90 centigrade will melt. 95 will emit toxic smoke that will kill you. I hope you realize that. Polystyrene, 90 centigrade, will melt. 90 100 will ignite itself and they will emit smoke that will kill you. It's not if so bad. That's why it is a strong push to <coughs> eliminate polystyrene from any accommodation or building where people they are living inside. Furthermore, rats, mouses and other animals, they love polystyrene, they love to chew in. So I've been building probably 4,000 building with polystyrene until I could afford a machine that start doing the first panel, PIR. It's polyurethane, it is fire hydrated polyurethane. It is low. This, this is for 45 minute fire hydrated certified. We use this one in mining and construction camps and building all over Australia. Uh, and with this one, I started thinking about building houses. And we did build the house. But then, <coughs> the house went, went up well, went out fast. But then I went inside the house and I said to myself, would I live in a still house? Still inside, still outside? <coughs> I don't think so. Might be if I had to, I will. But then I asked myself, would my wife live in a still house? I said, oh, I will have a problem now. <laughs> so I've been starting thinking how then to use steel and use other material. Now there are panels all around Australia, all around the world, where what I show you, they have it. You know, they can mix timber panel, they are some zip, structural integrated panel, insulated panel. But they, they, they can mix and match the material the way we can. But they got one problem. And the problem is they can only give you to a certain size. So you can get 2400, 2700, or 3 meters span. Now, mind you, the panels, they are all 1,200 wide. And if people, they got a lot of money, <coughs> and they got special project, I can make you a panel that it is seven meter long by three and a half meter wide also. So if you have a, a deep pocket with a lot of this, you have a special request I can make you a panel, seven and a half meter long by three and a half meter wide. But that is not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about panels. So, like what I say, 
there are rock panels in the wall that they basically the similar but they are not the same because you can only buy in search of length and that length is 2400 2700 or 3 meters <coughs> so I said that will restrict me it will restrict me so I invented then the way to join panels on continuous lamination system. Nobody has been able to achieve that anyway in the world at this stage. That's why Monarto, if you come in Monarto, <coughs> I will let you look at everything. And we got 11 sheets, but I will not let you go through the panel plate. We don't let no one in. It's a very close guarded secret. So to join panels, to join timber, magnesium board, uh, cement board, or whatever you like, it's not easy. Nobody has been able to achieve that. We can, and we do it very successfully. So... We got 54,000 square meters of raw area, and we are building another 22,000 more. But <coughs> so what I'm saying, we needed to understand that it's not a simple process. It's a very complicated process, and it is very, very, very intellectual, uh, hard to replicate. So once we achieve that. Then I started playing with the panels and start building a house. And I went to New Zealand because I thought I had a product that I could sell. Unfortunately, when I come back to Australia, the taste, they all fly. So I was not happy. I was not happy. I had to write all the people in New Zealand, say I'm sorry, I made a big promises. I can't leave none of them because we filed the trees. So we got back and we start working and working until we got there where we are. So the first thing that we had to do is all panels. There is, you know, if you look at the future, you look at this room, it's all panels. <coughs> panels everywhere. So the future of building is no more in bricks and mortar. It's no more slow. It is in something that comes, maybe we call them panel, we call them some other thing, but something that it is quick, easy, strong, and durable, that we can put it up together and we don't need a tracement. We have to minimize the amount of time required by tracement. We need to be able to have handy people under supervision of a good tracement to be able to build a house or shops or whatever. So, for doing that, I had to revise a lot of the connecting system. And the biggest problem was how we're going to connect the panels, how we then can support the panel by itself and support the structure of the roof or maybe second or third floor. Now, you know, I've seen a lot of panels, this type of panels, that people, they will uh, build the frame and then they're cladding using this panel for cladding. Or even panels, that they, they, different type of panels, but they only use it for cladding, not as a structure. My panels, our panels, they are structural panels. Believe it or not, and we got all this done by Exova, this panel is 1200. This panel, after two hours, fire riding, two hours, two 
class fire riding. He has a load bearing of 1600 kilo, 16 kilo newton. 1.5 ton. So for a second floor you only need 450 kilo. So this gives you, this panel here, give you the support for three floor. Okay. Very light white. Outside you can have steel. Inside you can have magnesium. Or you can have magnesium board, magnesium board. And if you're really old fashioned and can't think past your nose, you look even for cement board. By the way, I want you to know that cement is the third largest consumer of a green a producer of greenhouse effect in the world. Cement. Cement cracks. It's not elastic. Cement got no fire riding. No noise. And worst of all, cement absorb water. Can I just say, if you don't mind, if anyone wants to ask a question as we go along, something pops in your head, don't hesitate, do that as we go. Put your hand up. Put both hands up, whatever. So, so just yeah, chip in as we go, if you like. So, so what I'm saying is, I come up with a way that we can support a first floor, second floor, third floor. It's very simple. You only need a screwdriver and a few very small tools. We every panel they can come they can come to the size that you need, and we can have any imagination that you like. If you want deeper inside, timber, <coughs> connection. If you want, which one do you want? Surface out the frame. The floor. Uh, we, we have a floor board. On the floor. Oh, you That's it, sorry. Okay. If you want to have a floor, so this will stand up to six, uh, 1200. So, and you, you have a joist, not a 600, but a 1200. So this is fire rated and insulated. If you need a floor. If you need a roof, if you need a roof, now our roof, we got two different profile. You can go six meter span without any support. Gives you up to five R value. Five, five R value. Gives you one hour five right hook. These walls, they got 3.9 R value. Double the what is required by law, anyway in Australia. So really, you got a freezer room, better than a freezer room. If you put a match stick, you will be warm in, in winter. And if you put an ice cube, you will be cold in summer. <laughs> That's a bit of poetic justice. That's, you understand what I'm saying? That's true, Frank. In Melbourne last week, a chap said to me, you've never seen a brick veneer esky, which is, which is true. A, you couldn't carry it. B, 
but you know, an esky keep things warm in, in, in winter and cool in summer. Right. Now, <coughs> we will go about the, the fitting after. Oh, Frank, question? Just two things, just in case you're not coming back to them. Sorry. Um, in case you're not coming back to them, could you tell me, first of all, if you use the floor surface for a ground floor, what would you, would you use timber joists underneath or what would you use? And the next question is tell us a bit more about magnesium ore as an interior finish. We got that here. <laughs> this is the real McCoy. This comes from uh, from Monarto. It's our new um, our new plant. Now for the proof law, uh, I'm going to go to that in a minute. So what I'm saying is our panel, you can go up three story or two story, cyclonic region, region D category two. The highest in Australia, so 320 kilometers wind load. You try to get 220 kilometers wind load. I have because I go with a Ferrari. But if you try and you put your hand out, you go problem. So we our panels they are all righted. We got two hours fire righted. We got 3.9 hour value. We got 36 decibel sound reduction. With the magnesium board, they are wood approved. So I think you got a panel that you just outside you can pine, you can plaster, or inside exactly the same. You can plaster, you can do whatever you want. But then the good thing is that if you want to put a conju, we can put the conju inside also with an extra cost. But if you want to put the thing full uh, electrical, it's very easy to cut. It's very easy to cut. So anyone that is any person can utilize this product. <coughs> This is uh, the flow tile that we produce in Monarto, and you can buy that in modular span and you just bolt them together. So you can go from 2400 length and then a width, and then you go up to 6 meter at the increment of 600, or you can go 2700 or 3 meters, 3.2. Because we try to use whatever is available at present for the timber board. So you put this one on the floor, or you can use timber floor. No, no, no. So you, know, you can use concrete floor. So you are not, this is a building material. So instead of using the bricks, a frame, steel frames, this is gives you the brick, the seal frame gives you everything in one. So this replaces the brick layer, the, the fellow that comes and do the flashing for the jib rock, and the fellow does the frame. Two people, well, two days, the house should be up. The house in Monarch that you see, that has taken seven days to lock up stage by five unskilled people. Five unskilled people. They come from Cambodia. They just come off the plane. So it's, and we did that on purpose, just to prove the system. <coughs> that's it. Uh, that's the floor. 
the R rating for your floor panel. My floor panel or this this floor? Your floor panel. R2. However, I suggest you don't use it, it's too expensive. You can do lot better, lot cheaper, which I'll be showing you in a minute. Right. Your floor panel, you have to use that solid deck on your floor. So if you're doing that solid deck, you're going to drop right now and try to get down the outside deck, roughly 7 metres by 7 metres. Probably going to screw it up. Just getting on the side and there, that will and a system that's suitable for a lot of have a green road at the edges of it. And probably a tree. Exposed, yes. Hold on that. Exposed, you mean exposed, yes. Yes. Uh, but for our floor panel, I will, uh, I will get that into a minute. We, we suggest at this minute super, uh, super, super strength. Super strength, which it is waterproof. So this is come from New Zealand and we, we like the product, it's a very good product. It's not cheap product, but it's a very good product. So that's the product that we are using, that we recommend at this minute. However, where's the my Oh, okay. <coughs> I just picked up this one today in Monarto because we just start making magnesium board in Monarto. As you are aware, all magnesium board in the world is made in China. Scary, isn't it? It's more scary when you find out how much problem you get with the magnesium board coming from China. From the same batch, one batch passes the test, one batch fire the same taste. Now we bought this magnesium board from a very reputable international company. So the quality is coming is not good. And because it's not good we have to do something about it. So we are starting making our magnesium board in Monarto. So the same magnesium board that we go for the walls internal or external, we will recommend for the floor different thickness. Now, it's very important floor board or any cement board, it gets maximum to per 32 megapascal strength. This is MGO, this is MGO, 65 megapascal, double the strength of concrete, half of the weight, five rated, would approve. <coughs> so this is all done in Monarto. It's not been easy, it's not easy, but we are nearly there. Now, let's get how you will build this house. You know, I say a lot of things, but say how everything goes together. It's very simple. This is Aaron, our structural engineer. By the way, this, is, guest Aaron. this is our structural engineer. I can say thank you to Aaron for joining us because He's really been a, a man of strong help and uh, strong uh, advice and get us through a lot of the issues that we've been going through, especially with certification. Do you realize that there have been 32 different tastes? 32 different tastes for us before we can release the product on the market and will be then certified that anyone will be able to approve. And we have to maintain a quality assurance, things that from China, from any other country, does not exist. And we prove that 
because we got bull come from China, it's bull fire. And that bull cost us a lot of money because we bought from a local company that is an international company and we bought in good fire. So not only they fire us, but they cost me $15,000 of which bloody taste that we fire. So it's a lot of money. So now what I want you to understand is how we put things together. Simple, very simple. Let's say that this is the floor. You can use steel, timber, cement. That's the floor huh? for your house. You put the panel, and before you put the panel, you put, we give you either, we can sell it, we don't give to you, we sell it. <laughs> <laughs> But what I'm trying to tell you is all these tools you can buy from me or you can get somebody else to make it for you. No skin of mine. What I want to sell you is this. This one is no money for me. So if you can make it yourself or get somebody else to make it for you, go ahead. No skin of mine. So this is just a normal bracket. The holes. So goes in. Put self tapping screw. Then you put dynamo. Not dynamo. You put anchor. Chemical anchor. Chemical anchor. If it is not, or if it is cement, uh, if it is uh, steel, you just self tapping screw. Or if it is timber, again, screw. So that is then, that's part. Then this other part here, goes in, screw, screw, the wall is finished. Stand up. It's finished. But not only finished, you got then the mechanical connection. From the floor to the roof, you got all the strength, plus you got some more. This is steel. So somebody like Calabon, we can make Calabon. I prefer magnesium ball because I love magnesium ball. The color ball is fine. While you were talking about the way you fix that to the floor, when I tied the roof down with a concrete floor, floor up with the, with the rods in that and worked all the way to the roof to hold the roof down, how do you do that with a building like that? Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> So you are no fellow, but you're running faster than me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just give you a hand. Yeah. Just looking at this, yeah. look at our rods, yeah. and go through the main thing. See, the way inside you can put a rod. Yeah, but my question is, where do those rods anchor? To this concrete slab, or okay. I can go a steel, a steel flooring system, or a timber flooring system, simply to the flooring system. Our, but sorry, one thing, one thing, one thing. <coughs> You really need to have an extra tight down. You got steel connection. You got steel connection. Then the roof. got straight from the floor to the roof. From the floor, one way yeah, to the top, from the floor to the roof. But I also understand the force that winds have. You can put a 40 ton airplane in the end, the wind will hold it up. So, you know, the wind, right. the wind is an issue. All right. We, the engineering so far, proved to us that we got enough strength in this one. However, if you want to, nothing has been done. So inside here, 
the side is all here, you can put a 40 by 40 RHS. Mm -hmm. 40 by 40 RHS. Two and a half mil thick with this one. We can go more than three story. Yeah. Any any length. So this can be used also for services. But if you want to, if you've got money, which I know you do have money, and I need a fair bit of your money, we can put a conjure, 600 or 400 centers. centers. So then you, for each panel, you've got three, con three conjure. You can got the conjure that come for free, and the conjure that you want to buy. <laughs> if you don't mind, Frank, just to come back, one cap on the uh, wind law. If you have a high wind regions, side point, side point regions, C and D, we've got provisions for tie down rods, guys all the way from the roof, all the way to the slab. And you've got, as, min, as Frank mentioned now, the RHS, which is, will be used for two story house, load bearing in compressive and in tension too. So we've got all the provisions, we've got all the details. It's all documented. You're welcome to yeah. come to Monarch and have a look. We'll get there. Yeah. So, sorry. Is there a thermal bridge effect through your steel panels? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I will show you how to overcome thermal bridge effect once I finish the one. But that's a very good point. Because it was something that I didn't think of that before until something pointed out to me. So that's good. So now uh, we say how we put the floors. How we put the floors so it's easy. Then say how we go to do the <coughs> Again, holes, a truss welded. And then a cross thing that goes on top. So we go this way, bolted, screwed, not bolted, simple. It doesn't take any skill, just gun. Then this, yeah, this one they get done for each different type of panel. So this is not for this panel. But basically the system is the same. So then get screwed here. Now, this here we done only short one, but no one they come out me on either side. So then we put three three locks here, three locks the other side, so we got the strength. So then that goes away. Then we put Panel right on top with the silicon screwed straight in, it's locked. Like it's all easy. The other thing is that after that, this we fill with the foam. There. Coming back to you. <laughs> this also we need to be filled with the foam. To break the metallic the or the thermometer, or, or, or you can put magnesium. Mm -hmm. If you don't use the fork, you can use magnesium. However, for this one, you need the fork. So one thing is this is all off. So you got no thermal bridging. <coughs> So this is then, it's a cool room, it's a freezer room. We use this one at present. This is the panel that we use to manufacture our camps, our kitchens. I use freezer rooms, panel. This is our panel. So this is much better, much stronger than this. Hmm? Let's say something. The MGO all by itself has 60 minutes right for fire right so that's by itself will eliminate any thermal bridging yeah. having said that we can always just add the point inside just to make sure now we're undertaking to be honest very advanced analysis we're taking test cameras for one of the good things we built we're taking some photos for these good things to predict where's the locations of these thermal bridgings and 
work out some issues with those if we find any major issues with those. You know. Very important also is the flow. Sorry about that. But very important is also the flow. Because having or being able to do our own flow, we will be able to do the normal standard of longer panels. So if we need a 3.4, 3.6 meter, we will go, you know, up there. I've been told that I have to go. I to cut off. No, no, no. No, you're good, right? Uh, sorry. Another question, if I may. Um, areas like uh, the old sweep where you might need a uh, handrail, ground rail, uh, I might need it, you may not. Um, can you mount that directly into that system or do you need some other supporting system for that? Directly on this system. Just through just through on the connecting light and uh, you've got all the strength that you buy. The other thing also very important that on a six million board you can hang, and we got uh, evidence, we can, you can hang 12 kilos with a two screw, 12 kilos. So it's a very strong material, it's very strong board. And you don't need to find studs or anything? Some similar to a timber frame or anything. So these rails, you can just span them 1,200 centers where the steel connections are. This will stand 20 kilo, the 10 mil, 20 kilo with the two screw and egg. So that is 12 kilo with the 6 mil, 6 mil MGO. This is 10 mil. 20 kilo. That's, that's not bad. Hi, a couple of questions. Uh, one on the earthquake rating, have you had any ratings done? And the other, uh, thermal mass, so getting thermal mass inside a room to hold the warmth of a fire or something, have you got any any internal planning with a bit of thermal mass that would bond directly one or another to the, uh, the design to have it separately? Uh, earthquake, I will answer that one. The thermal mass, I'm out of that because I'm a chef, I'm not an engineer, but he will, uh, he will answer. Earthquake, the initial test that we done with the Jim Scullis, the motivation, this will stand to any uh, earthquake culture because basically it is a frame interlocked with each other, it's a light frame, and you know better than me that the earthquake, if it is everything rigid, it will crack. Not being a rigid everything, this will stand any earthquake. This what that's the proof that we got so far. The fact that they got at every twelve hundred, every twelve hundred they got a joint that allows that to move and allows to uh, this type of movement, it will, it will withstand. The other very important feature is that this panel, this panel, and we got picture of this panel, under pressure, they, they withstand the movement of bell moving. What do you call it? Sorry. The, the movement of the down the pressure. Uh, Static wind load. Static port, static wind load. So that we stand to static wind load to answer your question. So it's 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 the the wall, the concrete wall doesn't. This one will allow you to move. Right. Now about the other question, he answered. Okay. <laughs> you ask about the thermal uh, mass and if we can add any other material to be cladded straight away onto this thing. Simply, the board itself is a cement base, no, not a cement material, but I mean by the uh, chemical composition of it. You can add any extra layers of the, cement, uh, sorry, of the same product. We use that for fire testing, 
as you said, for the fire testing dice or the FRN rate for these boards. We've done one of those that we doubled the layer of the MGI. We used two layers of MGI and you can just create it straight away on top of the previous layer. So you can increase the uh, mass or thermal mass for the cladding material with no any additional fixtures or anything. Just you can use the silicon and you've got the screws where the location of the uh, steel starts. Just a second cladding, the same as exactly the same concept as using as using for example two layers of gypsum or two layers of uh, gypsum wood or one of those. Does that answer the question exactly? Because honestly, I don't hear exactly. No, no, that's, that's fine. Actually, there is some uh, gypsum rock material now, which is a little high thermal mass on it, probably knows the trade name, please. So it, it's important. It's important for you to understand that if you want to make a just normal uh, wall, you know, sand wall, that normal they use 16 mil uh, fire check and then they use 30 mil uh, rock wall and then a gap of 100 and then again you got fire, wall, uh, fire, um, fire check and uh, rock wall you can do the same with the 12 mil MGO we'll do exactly the same and the spice can be reduced so 12 mil MGO got the same sound reduction of a 16 mil fire check with one thing fire check is not waterproof it is waterproof fire check it's hard to repair, this is easy. Fire check will not be able to stand anything, or hold anything, or hang anything, this you can. Now, another very important feature of this material, this is fully renewable. Our panels, they are fully renewable. This can be crushed, and reuse it again. All the material, this is magnesium. You know when you got belly hike, you go to the doctor, they give you magnesium pills. So you got a lot of belly hikes here. <laughs> this stuff, this mineral, is mined here in the creek. So we use everything local. And um, uh, guess what? Nobody in Australia is producing this one. Can I, can I ask you, I'm aware that this sort of construction has been used in freeze periods for a long time. How long has it been used in outside walls? The reason I ask that is, what is the longevity of your outside wall construction? as far as all the diagonal temperature changes, when the outside metal, if you have metal inside and outside, mm -hmm. but obviously expand more on the inside, that expansion contraction is daily. Mm -hmm. So we don't use, we don't use uh, metal steel outside inside in our panels? It depends we, on the light, doesn't it? Sorry? Uh, exactly, true. Well, that's, that's one, two. Mainly when we use the steel from the outside, it's all covered with the uh, agrarian texture rendering for the outside. They'll, that should provide the UV protection and the thermal protection for that steel, for the external steel layer. You know, no one would accept that. Uh, we, we, we never came across a project that will use an exposed steel to the outside and exposed steel to the inside. We have a product that you can use steel to the outside. Sorry, this is the one here. You can use it just that they will provide for very high cyclonic regions. They will provide impact resistance. But we never came across a project that will ask for steel from outside and steel from inside to provide that differential in the expanding and contraction from inside and outside. I ask the question because if you're not used to a metal roof, which I am not, yeah. I ever go to a metal roof yeah. overnight, you can hear the whole roof moving at night as an expansion. That's a very good question because this doesn't do that. This does not do that. And I know you will not believe it, but we have already proved it because we got building. I got 10 years building with this material. And that does not do it. It does not 
to that movement because it's such a mess of insulation that stops that movement. I can guarantee that. The other thing very important is that the NGO is nothing new. The Romans, they used to use the 40% of the wood in Rome come from the aqueduct built by the Romans. That's what they use. It's a sustainable system. Uh, and this be used for earthworm walls or cellars. And how do you handle uh, chimneys? Uh, and if you're going to have a fireplace and have support, you're excellent, and my deafness, that they mix each other. <laughs> so, how does this work in cellars or basements or earth burn houses where the soil is pushed up against the wall? Yeah. So, do you mind if I ask a bit? Let's stretch out the question. <laughs> Simply, uh, the panels have certain, what we call electrical resistance. You know, uh, rating. Anything above that, which is the soil, may apply that to the retaining wall. We can't use it as a retaining wall. Having said that, we can always just use the same panel with less space in between the C support. It's all come, it all comes down to the engineering design for each single. So, what we can uh, generalize for, for our panels, for superstructures, for houses, which is all the forces applied on those superstructures, we know those. We know the wind load, we know the dead load and the light loads on those, people walking, this and that. But if you take, for example, a retaining wall, there's a huge difference between one meter retaining wall and a two meters retaining wall, you know? So based on that, each single case, we analyze the case, we know how much load we've got there, and we can always come out with a solution, an engineering solution for that, based on the use. The flexibility of the panel giving us the use of the steel plus the panel together, it's all about just compromising between how much the spacing and the use of the steel and how much the loads you've got applied to that structure. And just simple engineering analysis, we can come up with a solution for that. So it could be used there. I've got one of the projects that they're inquiring about some landscaping structures, which is we've got lots of retaining walls for those and we've got some solutions but as i said i can't give an answer one fixed answer for everything we have to analyze each single case that's one was there anything else about the the other question was uh fencing and and heat sources this is as you were saying earlier that uh, yep. with the, uh, the difference between polyethylene and polystyrene and yes. having a, a heat source go through the wall that you need to have exit the house yeah. how do you handle that with these panels? this one you can Put fire. We have a fire here in one hour. Oxy torch, not a thousand, but fifteen hundred seconds. Right? You can see the the hands because this doesn't melt. Does not emit smoke or fumes. But if I want to build a, uh, a fireplace in the house, you know, and a base there here or something, uh, how does how do I get the gases out of the house without melting the internal part? Of the it will not melt this way. You know, you know, you come to the monarch, how do you give the physical evidence and prove you will not have this one? Provide you to like do the, the structure correctly and apply everything correctly, you will not have this one. I will put that in writing, guarantee. We've got what we call it, if you don't mind my friend, we've got what we call it NATA certified, National Australian Testing Authority, NATA certified test for fire rating, up to two hours fire rating for these panels. The foam itself doesn't melt, simply it's just get charted, you know, you just kind of. So they use for very exposed fire use as a chimney or one of those. We can work out a provision just for thickening the, in the inner layer for those. But as we were saying, there's, we're not, we're, there, each single case, there's always challenges and there's always some minor steps to be done. But the, the entire superstructure of the house, this is the solution for everything. It's but a new product. It's a new product. And certainly there will be some areas we will have to work on. It's like when I come back from New Zealand. Right? Right. Uh, well, before I ask any more questions, could you use the microphone, 
Okay. Uh, uh, I would like also to let you be aware that we got to use this panel of scenario that we produce to do the first 16-story apartments in the city in Franklin Street modular that will be made only one after. So we got another area, another section of our business that we are developing, we coming in. So instead of you doing the normal building, in a week, 10 days, we should be able to do 60 story, I said two weeks, 60 story, until 70 apartments in Franklin Street. So we not only do that, but we do other things, other innovation also. So thank you. Great. Um, we're interested in the uh, sustainability of the panels and wondering about the embodied energy that it takes to make a panel. Are your average sort of panel safe compared with um, like a brick veneer wall or something? You know, do you understand embodied energy? So for uh, we t we're talking about the construction uh, yeah. forces. No, no. Right. no the, the energy the used to make the panels. To create the panels. Yes, uh, to create the panels, not to build, not to build the infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, to create them. Yeah. 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 Okay. This they are five ingredients. Yeah. But what's the total of the energy consumed to create the panel? I can't tell you. And I'm not going to tell you because I would have to bullshit it. But I will certainly find out. I will certainly find out. Cert certainly we need to know because you know, this is the first presentation. By the way, we are only here by the fourth because somebody has chicken out. <laughs> so you know, we were not prepared. And you can see that. To make you happy, the cost of energy in Brisbane about a week ago was zero last time because the supply was greater than the demand. There's so much energy in Australia, it's unbelievable. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, I'm assuming that you can put those panels on like a regular concrete pad floor. So That's correct. But then once you put the walls up with, with your panels, are you limited then to using panels for the same? <laughs> no, you know, you can do whatever you like. You can use that as an infill, you can use that as a structure, you can use that as uh, a cladding. So, okay, so you can frame a regular roof on top of yes. the panel walls. Yes, yes. You can use normal trusses or you can use our system, whatever you like, mix and match. You, you, you are not really, uh, this will not push you to use my system for anything. This is a versatile system that you can mix and match. How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> Show me your wallet. Oh, it's empty. It will output you that way to a lock up stage, a house on piers, to a lock up stage. Is around the five hundred dollar per square meter, which is very favorable to the their cost. To their cost, it is nine hundred thousand dollar. This is meaning with with the roof. That's including roof, including everything. That's including lock up, huh? Including window. Including window. That's lock up stage. By the way, we got beautiful windows. <laughs> From Italy, <laughs> the double glaze, double glaze, the thermocol, and they got even shutters, and I can sell them for less than the normal skinny window that you get here. But that's not a separate business. <laughs> My question is actually the same, that is the house we're seeing in front of us. What would that cost? <laughs> What would it cost if it was a traditional brick veneer? Sorry. How much reduction between the house we built and a traditional brick veneer? Well, I, I haven't done the costing of a brick veneer because I'm not interested. But I can tell you what that one could cost. And certainly, a finish up, it come up 
with everything put together from and windows and bathroom and stove and it was about 850, 900 dollars square meter. That's pine Mind you, it's not the best pine but it had everything, so we can move in. And we got some very special furniture. If you come to Monarto, we're going to put a patent on our furniture. We got really top furniture. Just quickly calculate it now, sorry, Frank. Just quickly calculate what Frank said about the cost of the square meter and what we know about the initial cost for the near half. So you've got, just quickly, up to 40% reduction in the cost just for, for the use of the material. That's subjected to the guys who's you know, dealing with the money. <laughs> I don't deal with right. that. Uh, let's try to wrap it up because they want us to bug it off. <laughs> How many square meters is that house? How many square meters? 174. <coughs> By the way, that sign was not my design. That was a Greek tool. He wanted to build houses like this in Maninki. I said, all right, we build one here. It was and everyone's welcome to come to Monato and have a look. You know, have a physical. Uh, if, if you don't know any Cambodians, is there a building firm that's experienced? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got about six companies here in Adelaide, private, private building companies, that will do the building because we only sell panels. Right. But what we've, what's happened is people are sending us a lot of plans saying, we love your panels, please build our house. Well, we don't build houses. So we would refer you to one of our registered builders who are used to using our panels. Approved builders. You know, we, 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 we go to start do some training. I'm putting another building in Monarto, uh, hoping to bring a few builders together so they can understand because we had a builder from Meningi that took one month, six weeks to do one chicken box and uh, five people, five people and then five people, five, five days so I ended up second him straight away I say true, 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 true any other question please? All right, thank you everyone for coming. I pass on to Alan. Thanks uh, very much, Frank and Swarik and everyone. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of questions afterwards, so if we just uh, wrap up the, the um, formal presentation, go to the general question answer. Oh, just out of interest, are there any builders or architect, uh, house designers here tonight, uh, or anyone who's sort of seriously thinking about building a house, extending a house, doing anything at all to a house, oh yes, quite, quite a few. So, hope it's been a useful exercise. Just on the general questions and answer session, uh, Eric, would you like to tell us where the EV Electric Vehicles Association are moving to? Um, my name is Eric Lodder, I'm the secretary of the Adelaide branch of the Adelaide. The Australian Electric Vehicles Association. Uh, my name is Eric Rodder. I'm the secretary of the Adelaide branch of the Australian Electric Vehicle Association. Um, many of you members uh, that are here, I can see a few, um, would know that we are now meeting in a different place because of problems with our previous uh, venue. Um, it will be held at the uh, function room which is on the northern side of the Vogue Theatre at 25 Belair Road, Kingswood uh, starting at the normal time 7 o'clock and those that have a meal before we're generally going to meet at um, Bonjournos which is just a little bit further south so that's um, Wednesday night this coming Wednesday night at 7.30 So they normally start at 7.30? Yep <coughs> 7.30 7, yeah, 7 yeah, and 7 to 7.30, we, if anyone wants to come along, they can join up or pay their fees. Thanks, Rudy. Yeah. <coughs> uh, quickly, if this is anyone's first meeting, uh, go to see Catherine, who will give you a free magazine. Uh, our meeting, the October meeting, will feature Ollie Clark talking about um, fuels from algae. And our November meeting will have uh, Frank. Um, 
Fra sorry, yeah, thanks. Fra Frank Seeley talking about uh, the new energy efficient air conditioner. Just quickly, any any comments on sustainable house day? Anyone? Uh, uh, well, any, any general comments? The website wasn't very good. I thought the website was very difficult to negotiate. Yep. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, once we got there, um, once I saw the place, I thought it was good. Right. So, so we actually went to visit the homes. The sustainable house day was open for the first time across two weekends. So, if you want to show the hands of people that actually got to one home or two homes or whatever? Oh, thanks for that. I, uh, I was on at Albert Park and I asked people how they'd heard of it and a good 90, 95% was because there were ATA members, so uh, the rest of the advertising um, was a bit spasmodic. Any other questions on a general sustainability theme? Anything you've uh, seen, anything you've done that you can recommend? Yes. Um, CSIRO are doing a study uh, on energy efficiency for houses that have been built in the last four years. So um, if, you, if you know of someone who's got a house, it doesn't have to be a sustainable house. Um, in fact, I'd probably like it if it wasn't all sustainable houses that they actually assessed, but just more normal houses, um, then um, if maybe just to talk with me and I can pass on some information about contacting CSIRO. Um, up until about a week ago, they had about four houses in Adelaide, but to come over to Adelaide to do the assessment on energy efficiency of houses, they needed 20. So I sent uh, an email around to ATA committee members to advertise that uh, they were interested in more houses so we could get them over here sooner. So if anyone knows of someone, then maybe um, have a word with me or Alan or Maxine or someone on the committee and we'll forward the details of how to register for that. Thanks. Thanks, Catherine. No more questions, no more comments? Okay, see you next month and come have a cup of tea. <laughs>